they are very active and they're very elusive. People are being abducted into them sometimes and are being returned, un uh, usually unharmed, but usually with amnesia, so as to not be able to remember what happened to them. They end up with what we call missing time. Most of you have heard of that, I believe. Um, the UFOs and their occupants can appear out of thin air and they can also disappear. I've seen that happen. <clears throat> They appear to be uh, occurring in large numbers uh, here around Earth uh, when you look at the number of reports that are always streaming in by credible people. There is no evidence to indicate these things are rare. They're certainly not. Certainly not in my personal life, I know that. <clears throat> the science community cannot apply the scientific method to these UFOs. They can't capture them, they can't study them. Uh, they can't put them to a beaker and test them repeatedly. <clears throat> so what they do is basically pretend that they don't exist because they can't do anything with them or about them. So they just ignore them. The religious community has no idea how to handle this matter, so they just look the other way. The government definitely knows about UFOs and engages them from time to time. But the government always acts as though they have no clue as to whether UFOs even exist or not. The so-called alien abductions run down through family lines. This is something I did not know before I went out my front door and started checking this out. Uh, a lot of researchers still don't know this, but I keep finding this repeatedly. Uh, not, just, not just anybody gets randomly abducted. My investigations have shown me that any abductee I discover very likely has an older relative experienced in abductions too. If the abductee has children, at least one of those children are going to be abducted during their lifetime. <coughs> UFOs are definitely real. I've seen them. I know for a fact they are, and I'll stand on it till the day I die. It's an absolute fact. I've seen them. The only other explanation is if somebody was able to manipulate my brain and make me convinced that I'm seeing something that's not there. It's one of the two. And uh, with all the people I've talked to, I'm pretty certain these things are real because I'm not the only one seeing them. <clears throat> if I know what I know, you can rest assured that the government knows a lot more. They have more resources than I do, and they've been studying this thing for at least 60 years. <clears throat> as far as the types of craft uh, that are out there, I can only confirm what I've seen. I do know the saucers are real. I've seen one saucer, daytime sighting. It was covered in a, um, it's hard to explain, a plasma, it looks like. It was the same color as the sun. It, it was as, as though it was blazing, just like the sun, but you could see the edges of it. There was no glare to it. But I believe it was plasma, which is the same substance as the sun is made of, and all stars. Uh, it was unusual, and I had a chance to see it for well over a minute while I was driving on the highway. Um, and it was stationary. Um, and of course, the black triangles that you've heard about on the TV documentaries, they're real. That's what I saw up in space. And I've talked to many people who have claimed to have seen these things down low and up close. Um, I've also, in one case, I saw an unknown shape of craft because it was dark and all I could see was, were the running lights on it. I don't know what the uh, thing uh, was shaped like because it was so dark and hard to see, even though it had lights on it. Uh, but it was uh, a craft with a lighting configuration I've never seen, and I've worked on aircraft lights before. I know what they're supposed to have on them. This thing was flying illegal. It wasn't flying in accordance with FAA regulations, I can tell you that. And it was flying low and slow in an area known for UFOs. And I was with a small group of people who, uh, had seen UFOs before out in that area and they had a knack for knowing when they'd show up and we were taken out there that night and because we hung around about two and a half hours, we managed to see one come by and check us out. It got to within six tenths of a mile of us at its closest point. I had binoculars on it. I had a full view of it, could not see the whole of it no matter what I did. It just did not reflect any light off the surface, but it had strange lights on it I've never seen on any aircraft before. 
And the only other types of UFOs that I've seen are just strange white lights in the sky that uh, move in funny directions or they just suddenly blink out unexpectedly and that sort of thing. And a lot of people have seen various types of white lights, uh, sometimes dancing around, playing with each other and flying in formation and so forth. Uh, sometimes physical evidence is left behind by the abductors after an abduction. I was abducted on at least one occasion by somebody and was left with minor surgery on the center of my chest. I, I discovered that only late that night when I was getting ready to go to bed. I had fresh surgery that was only hours old. It was small, but it was definitely surgery. Somebody had somehow taken me during that day, probably in the afternoon, taken me um, out of my truck I was driving for the day making deliveries, and somehow did whatever it is, it is they did to me and put me back in place, and I didn't know a thing that night when I was going to bed, I took my shirt off and there it was in the mirror. I knew what it was because I'd seen this kind of thing on people who claimed to have been abducted before. But I'd never seen a fresh uh, mark like this. And I didn't know that they had these little incisions in them, but this was definitely a surgical incision. I knew what it was. Strangely, I wasn't very moved by it. I knew exactly what it was intellectually, but emotionally, uh, I was sort of shrugging my shoulders about it. That's not normal. Something was programmed in my head to not worry about it, to just not worry about it. Don't tell anybody, don't think about it. Well, I was already ready for this kind of thing to happen. I realized that in order to keep from being manipulated, you have to rely on your intellect. That'll get you through anything. Your feelings and emotions can easily be manipulated. Uh, I'm sure all of you have been manipulated that way by various <coughs> friends and relatives over the years. Uh, and even the aliens can get you more on the emotional level, but the intellectual level, you can steer around them sometimes. So uh, I was programmed to let my intellect kick in, and uh, I, got, I got my camera, and against my will, I took pictures, enough pictures until I had at least a couple to come out good. I had to guess at the focus and all that, but I got a couple of picture level marks, so now I can look back and still remember that was a real event. <clears throat> What they did was somebody went in and took some tissue from underneath my skin for a tissue sample. Apparently they were checking and monitoring my condition, my overall physical condition, for some reason. Now, abductions do occur. I know this for a fact. Um, there, are di there are variations in abductions. So different people tell you different scenarios, but they all are generally the same. Uh, a typical abduction might be where you're sound asleep at night, two or three in the morning. You find yourself suddenly awake for no reason, wide awake, alert. You find that you cannot move any part of your body for some reason. You don't know why. You can't move your legs, your toes, anything. This is a condition called sleep paralysis. They have a name for that nowadays. In some cases, you might feel that someone is even in the room, but you can't look over to see. Suddenly you feel a deep fear because you can't move. It's a very scary thing. I've felt it before. And immediately something in your mind tells you, don't worry, it's okay. It's not you saying that because you can't bring yourself out of a fearful state. That's, that's impossible for me, I'm sure. Uh, suddenly your fear goes away. Right then. And you lay there. And after a while, you wait and the paralysis starts going away very slowly. It takes several minutes. And then everything's nice and quiet and back to normal and you don't understand what just happened. <clears throat> next thing you know, you're waking up the next morning after a very deep sleep. You weren't even sleepy, the last thing you remember. What likely happened is you were paralyzed by beings that suddenly appeared in your room. You were given something to keep you mentally preoccupied. And then you were taken somewhere and tampered with medically. Returned and given amnesia of the event. Sometimes people remember bits and pieces of what happened. And sometimes hypnosis is used to bring it out. Sometimes people remember everything. And those are the people that have trouble going to sleep at night. They can't just really dismiss this. Uh, strangely, I've noticed that many of the people I've talked to with stories of UFOs and maybe even abductions 
also have had supernatural experiences. And many of them have relatives that have had what we call supernatural experiences of various kinds. I don't know what the connection is, but I keep running into this. Now, people generally report four types of aliens, and this is from the reports. Generally, you hear about these short, gray people with the big black eyes, and then usually they have leaders that are taller versions of them. Sometimes you hear about reptilian-looking creatures. These creatures stand on two legs, but they look more like rep reptiles than they do mammals or anything else. Sometimes you have insect-looking yeah. beings that are on two legs, and they're taller than we are. And all of them have big black eyes. That seems to be the common denominator. Uh, the final group I can tell you about are, are human-looking beings. Uh, often they have long blonde hair, blue eyes, and they remind you of people from Scandinavia a lot of times. Occasionally variations of all these beings are seen here and there, but uh, more rarely. All these beings seem to be able to communicate with us telepathically. They seem to be able to get into your minds. How they do that, I cannot figure that out. But I've experienced it. They definitely know how to get inside your head. They know probably more about the inner workings of our bodies and brains and our minds than we do. Now, scientists define sleep paralysis as merely a sleep disorder when a person is in an in-between state of sleep and being awake and something in the brain doesn't work quite right for a little while. And the memories of being in an alien spaceship is supposedly a natural hallucination as a result. The research that they've done, I found, is rather shoddy and does not strongly support their conclusions. I've learned when suspecting someone of, of having an abduction to ask them if they have ever had sleep paralysis. Usually their answer is yes. That's why I keep asking. That's one of my first questions when I first start talking to someone about possible abduction. That leads me into deeper areas and I usually get a lot of results. Some people think aliens and UFOs are paranormal. Some think they're just nuts and bolts ETs from another planet somewhere out in space. Well, we, we can't decide yet at this time from the research, but they seem to cover both ends of the spectrum. Now, since I talked last year here, I've had one sighting of a UFO. It had been a couple of years since I'd seen anything, and it was just a very short sighting. And I mentally asked them if they were listening in to let me have another sighting because uh, things were starting to get a little stale and I just needed a little boost. Sometimes you, you get this doubt seeping into the back of your mind and it grows and you think, but is there some way I can be wrong about all this? But these beings keep letting me see UFOs every couple of years or so. It seems like they want me to do what I'm doing because it keeps me going. Well, I was getting ready to go on a trip for a couple of weeks. I decided to take my binoculars with me on faith and hope that I'd have a sighting. Well, I drove and did my work and so forth for over a week. And when I was in the, the uh, a remote area of Texas, out in the prairie, and uh, it was early evening and it was just as dark as it could be, I had just passed a small town and I suddenly got this compulsion to, to stop up ahead and get out and just look up at the stars, maybe get my binoculars out. Because you could see stars through the windshield and I thought, well, I bet there's really stars out tonight. And uh, it wasn't 30 seconds, I saw a sign that said, Scenic Overlook, ahead. 